All right, good people. As always, thank you for listening and hitting that play button. Be sure to tell your friends about this podcast. Give us a rating if you haven't. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and hit us up on social media at Coming Clean Pod, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that, all that good stuff. And if you don't have friends, we'll be your friend. Yes. It's episode 59, The Rise, The Fall. Nice. And The Rise. When this place is Hi, this is Alex M. And this is Morgan S. And you're listening to Coming Clean Podcast with Sam and Marty. Can he get down like this? This is the Coming, Coming Clean. Clean Podcast. Coming get down like that. With I'm Sam and Marty. Marty. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Left coast, best coast, did I stutter? Welcome. Happy Friday. This is the Coming Clean Podcast. The number one podcast about MTV's Laguna Beach, The Hills, and Siesta Key. It's Friday, so that means we are talking all about The Hills. As always, I am the bro that runs the show. My name is Marty, and with me as always... He's a big boy. Boy, I know. Is officially mid through sober January. It's Were Sam, you really and I'm doing that? yeah, and I'm proud of myself. Um, it's you. very difficult. Jabroni. <laughs> oh, congrats! I guess. Yeah, my body is fully cleansed. <laughs> my right. my temple is pure. <laughs> until you like do. Yeah, things. until probably tomorrow. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, yes. There you go. Uh, no, it's only Thursday. Come on. Give it till the Super Bowl. I mean, tomorrow's uh, there's a happy hour, so um. you, I mean, when the when the opportunity knocks. All right. Hey, you do you, man, but we got to do some headlines. The Hills headlines. All right, we missed the headline last week. Shout special shout out to good friend of the podcast for letting us know that we missed it again. This is she. She is like our fact checker. She this what the second or third time. This, this is the second time, and you know, it, just when how does the news get the they get their news articles from anonymous tips? <laughs> so don't we? We we have a we have our own version of TMZ out on the streets, and they they let us know. You know, they're all waiting at the airports. They're all over at John Wayne Airport just waiting for them, even though half of them already live elsewhere. Hey, <laughs> we got we got our moles everywhere. <laughs> well, better get that checked, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey Coming in hot this week. Um but yeah, what what did we miss last week, Sam? Uh well we missed that Casey, I think Reinhardt, she was in season two. Her and uh she was Merelda. She was the one who had all the quesadillas at her cool house. Uh, she just had her second child. Hermelda. Hermelda. <laughs> Hermelda. Yeah. Well, how how many children? I think this is her second child. Do we know if her husband is the same one? Uh, her what's her what what do you call it? The prom date? Uh, not totally positive. I should look into this. Yeah, you know what? Let's let's just say yes. We we don't we, yeah we don't check facts. We just Doug Doug <laughs> Reinhardt. Oh, Doug, that's what? her brother. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, oh, Sean Brown. Sean no clue Brown. who that guy is. She got married in two thousand six. All right, she's Casey Brown now on um, Instagram. She runs her own cupcake place. Um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm trying to go to the messages of our, um, page so we can give a proper shout out. Um, give me two seconds riveting. Here. Yeah, great, riveting great. There. You can see we're very prepared as my computer lags. So if you find it before me, I just want to make sure we're giving the proper shout out for the anonymous tip. 
Um, shout out to Allison. There you go. My bad. We're by the third time we miss or fourth time we miss a another headline. She's gonna let us know, and we're gonna. She's gonna be a part of the show. She's our she's our stat checker. Oh, it turns out uh, she had Sarah Bareilles at her wedding. Like as a friend or to sing? Uh, I have no idea, but she sang a song at her wedding. Oh, wow! I wish I had that kind of friend. Pretty impressive. Well, at your wedding. <laughs> I won't be able to bring any more famous. Okay. Uh, I'll I'll play a track. <laughs> <laughs> or it's going to be like, uh, I don't know, who's not important. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so yeah, congrats to Casey. It took us a good five minutes to <laughs> stall until we found our friend, Allison. But shout out to you, Allison, for having our back as always. And um, you know what? If you bring us another tip out of nowhere, maybe you, you could get some uh, merch. Oh. Where can we find that, Marty? Well, we can you y'all can find that at teespring.com slash stores. Don't forget that S at the end. Slash coming clean pod. Special um special campaigns running right now. Uh, if you buy our logo t shirts, proceeds of that will be going to the um drew project uh, drewproject.org you can listen to our cs the key episode episode 58 from earlier this week to get all the details from that and our you can still get the squad t-shirts from laguna and of course if you have any suggestions or if there's any designers out there that want to contribute ideas or designs hit us up at coming clean pod but now we have wasted a lot of time not the most efficient episode, but we're going to catch up. And now let's go over the highlights of which episode? Season 2, episode 11, Everyone Falls. Poop. The Hills Highlights. So my co-host has taken some liberties on our Google Doc. <laughs> Just like Ron Bergen, he reads everything. <laughs> All right, uh, so let's start off. So there's really two big storylines happening on this one. They've separated the cast a little bit before they were a little bit more intertwined. Now we get a specific, uh, like, Lauren side, Lauren Teen Vogue side, and Heidi Spencer side. Let's start yep. off with um, a little lighter note. So let's talk about uh, Lauren... You know, being a pretty good friend to Whitney, being her wing lady at the office when it comes to grabbing opportunities, because it's something that Whitney wants. She's been working there for a long time. Five five years as an intern. Yep. Uh, so, so she's graduating now. Either she's a fifth year senior or she was interning since she was a senior in high school. Yeah. Or yeah. Or maybe she like transferred somewhere and she's been. I mean, it, it, she for all, Yeah. For all <laughs> intents and purposes, like. She it's, it's it's pretty solid that she's been earned ter- interning oh, yeah. for five years. Like yes. if you've been interning your whole college career and then classes and then mm-hmm. trying to graduate, maybe she was on a five year plan. Right. If she was also interning. Yeah, maybe she got like the sort of combo. You get a master's if you stick for the fifth year. Something like that. Yeah. We, we're not sure. We don't do a lot no. of research. Kayfabe only. So uh, my question here that we're we we should answer. We're sticking with the question format until we hear otherwise from the crew because we are liking this. Um, so in her search for opportunities, do you think she is approaching this the right way? This is our forte because it's office talk, <laughs> and that's our basically our lives outside of the yeah. show. I mean, I think it's really impressive that you know she's sticking her neck out there. She's reaching out to the appropriate people, like mm-hmm. the high ups, and seeing what's out there, what's available. If she's you know get the feedback that is she right for the job? She wants to figure out the future. Um, she still wants to be seems with in this industry and whether she's cut out, she wants that feedback and she's really pushing the envelope to get there. And with some perks along the way of being able to show off her, you know, she never thought she would be a model, right. but turns out she's getting an opportunity. Yeah. So, I mean, just, just the fact that she did stick around teen, Vo- that they kept her around teen Vogue for, for five, five years, years as an intern. Yeah. I mean, even being in one company these days, you know, us millennials, can't stick around on a regular job for five years. The longest I did was, well, you've been there for a long time, Six. more than five years, yeah. Six. Longest I've done was maybe 
four, almost four years, and that's including an internship and a regular job. So, you know, that's not easy. Um, and she's getting the opportunity. She's asked for it. Uh, Lisa definitely seems to be on her side. And, you know, I, I, she, I think she's playing it perfectly. She asked for the opportunity, and when they gave it to her, she took it. Yep. With a little bit of a slip along the way, why don't you tell us a little bit about that for those who forget? Sure. So this, this so this episode is like one of the top ones that when we people talk about the hills, they're like, oh, do you remember when Whitney fell on? So it was for Good Morning America. It was showing, I believe, Oscar fashion mm-hmm. um, throughout the years and high level. There was I, basically the guy who's just below Anna Wintour Andre. was on. Andre was on Good Morning America explaining the fashions, basically discovers Whitney as she's interning, helping out with the project, and he asks her to wear uh, Hillary, Selma Swank. Hayek. Hillary, Hillary Swank. Swank dress with the open back, long sleeves, very, very well known as she's walking down the steps, gets the last steps, takes a tumble, Oof. not a full slip, right. like more like a squat-ish fall. Yep. She was able to recover, smile with grace, but... Mm-hmm completely mortified yeah so definitely a traumatizing moment especially if it's your first time on tv you know that's just (laughs) yeah i mean they they called her like intern at teen vogue whitney like now her name's on there and at the time i remember this being like a big deal like i remember i feel like i vaguely remember seeing it on good morning america and then like watching this and I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe she fell on live TV. Like right, it was crazy. This is already, especially since this is season two, she has her name out there. Yeah. Um, this is between seasons because this airs March. So that happened about a month. Be- this episode aired about a month before that. So we really got no context as this was happening. Yeah. We just knew somebody fell on Good right. Morning America, not realizing it was like, I don't know if I realized it was Whitney at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know where it was mentioned. You're just but... like rocking, watching Good Morning America at home. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, not these, not these days, but <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, mean, like I, in high I just school. remember or like seeing on the news, like it right. was like a thing, like yeah, it was a big I- I- issue. But now, like looking back on like the at what actually happened, it didn't seem like it didn't seem that crazy in the episode. Like I yeah, remember, I felt like, like there was more stumble. Yeah, and I felt like it was more drama in the episode. Right. But watching it now, I was like, oh, she just kind of fell. Like, it wasn't that big of a deal right. or a surprise for she me. She kind of just, like, fell off frame for, like, a couple of seconds and then... Go yeah, she just, like, dropped go. down. Yep. Um, so, if I can be a little immature for a little bit. Uh, em- sure. Emily m- mentioned that, hey, at least you didn't, like, fall flat on your face, like, completely. Yeah. Number one. <sighs> that would have been hilarious. <laughs> or this, the other one that Audrina mentioned... She was like, oh, what if you fell? And then everyone just started falling like dominoes. Even more sure, hilarious. You took, every, you took everybody down. <laughs> yeah, that would have been amazing. That would have been... that. Like, Whitney would still have a TV show right now if that was happening. She would be like a real housewife of something or just do, or was like on one of, surreal life. That was what I was thinking. <laughs> well, at least she was able to move on and like get past this whole ordeal. Yeah. Because, I mean, eventually this sets up for Whitney in the city, and they're definitely, mm-hmm. uh, at the end, It's she gets a lot of congratulations and, like, acknowledgement, like, oh, don't worry, like, it happens all the time, right. from Anna Wintour sends a mm-hmm. phone call, she gets a handwritten letter, yep. or not a handwritten, maybe probably typed, I mean, probably the assistant typed that and sends it out <laughs> to everybody, right. but it she at least is now in the running, she has the chance to go to New York City, interview for the role and see how it goes yeah i was gonna say shout out to teen vogue that's a really great like as much pressure as they have in the working environment in that industry that's a really supportive group for for like all the way up to the executive office to back your intern like that and really encourage her so that's like really cool of them and i personally wasn't expecting it from them they're like whatever like it's no big deal i thought it was just gonna be like that to make her feel better but they really went above and beyond so shouts to lisa and the crew there yeah i mean if i fell at work i don't see the ceo and like right. and like the global ceos telling me oh it happens all the time people fall <laughs> i don't know i mean maybe some well, people need some tough you're, love you're, 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 they know you're just trying to collect work that's called <laughs> 
<laughs> he's, like, he's trying to slip again. Like, who, uh, like, why does he keep coming in with paint buckets and ladders? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was going to say, whenever I see a ladder, I try climbing it and it never works out. So I, I stick the landing every time. My, my carpal tunnel is starting to stick in, <laughs> sink, sink in. Uh, but yeah, and if anyone slips in my office, I'm whipping out the camera and yelling, World Star! <laughs> for content i mean the chances of somebody slipping in your outside your office is probably high i'm assuming there's a lot of ice yes uh the weather here in minnesota has been uh uh, the uh i know the northeastern people coming in from the super bowl are used to it but this is just a whole different ball game of cold (laughs) yeah even the east coast people i don't think they understand how cold it is there i didn't i thought i was like oh i can deal with this no, just to, we're going off topic a little bit here, but just to set the context, uh, as those watching the video version see Sam in a in his little blanket there. Uh, Very but, chill. Yeah, check us out on YouTube. Just search Coming Clean Podcast. Um, but yeah, I mean, just walking outside in minus, in like, quote unquote, feels like minus 25 degrees. It hurts to breathe. Like you feel the inside of your body freezing. <laughs> And just no amount of like, yeah, I, I, I've been wearing a lot of Under Armour, just like doubling up Under Armour thermals. Just, yeah, you need those. For, you need those thermal <laughs> long johns. Yes, um, but yeah, we, we're where's my drop? We're going off track here. That is crazy. You're you're going off track. Maybe here. you're the problem. No, we are all problems here. But speaking of problems, I have a problem. Okay. So speak your mind. So they bring Emily back, right? Yeah. Uh, super those, Emily. Yes, yeah, Super Emily per Elsie. Um and for those who don't remember, she was here uh, late last season in season 1 as a New York intern helping out uh one of the events that Teen Vogue had. She basically bodied and flexed all over Whitney and Elsie cuz she's very type A, she's very well put together, has all her ducks in a row basically the power intern, everything you would want from an intern. She is really, and I know we're kayfabe only, but it's a little bit obvious that just the cuts of of when, when, yeah, of her face when Andre was talking about how Whitney should be a model and they cut to Emily. And she's like, (sighs) yeah, making like huffing and puffing and making like mad faces. She's being portrayed obviously as a villain, when mm-hmm. number one, I don't even think she is a direct threat to, or th- her and Whitney are direct competitors or threats to each other. And number I two, mean, she also was on the TV segment. Yeah, so they, but they're like, like equal. Yeah, no, I and they're in two different like states, right? Um, unless like it's only one intern, like one intern gets hired for like the whole like country. Yeah, and if they're good but, enough, they'll find a spot for both of them. Exactly. Like, this is the where, I mean, I understand, like, the whole, I guess the fashion industry is very cutthroat and whatnot. But still, like, if somebody has talent, like, you find a way to keep somebody. And you're working under Lisa pretty much directly. So yeah. she clearly has a lot of pull. So, yeah, if she, th- I, she could be, she seems like she's being portrayed and the way she's acting as someone who's super fair. And if you're good enough, she'll find a way to keep you around either you know hey maybe like spend like four more months as an intern but we'll pay you more or something like that and then we can get you in once the job opens up but yeah i just i I don't get why elsie's so threatened by her like yeah maybe maybe you should i mean like you probably work fine but like maybe you should work harder and be like emily i don't Uh, know once again i'm just it's the whole control thing again i just don't think well that's why she wanted whitney to be be the head of the win the position be the head of the interns right because you don't want to work for emily but also she seemed sort of when whitney mentioned the job description over breakfast or lunch whatever they were doing at the end of the episode she i mean i i saw a little flinch from lc like wait so you're saying i'm gonna be you're gonna be my boss oh yeah that's what i was trying to figure out whether like at first she didn't want that to happen or and And then then she maybe she realized that it was like she walked it's a it back idea. yeah 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 i thought at first she was like wait what now i have to report into you and was like, number one she has like four more years of experience than you so yes it just makes sense 
And then, yeah, she walks it back when she was like, oh, wait, bad thing to say to a friend who's clearly qualified for the job. And, you know, the alternative is Emily, which, you know, I wouldn't mind reporting under either of them. They're both super responsible. They've been trained by the best. Yeah. So, I mean, I just look Whitney's only one year older than LC and she already right. has four more years of experience <laughs> than her. Yeah, I, I, I don't no, and yeah, it's not like so. Emily gets there, and she wasn't even like the first episode. She was clearly like, "Yo, I'm the best one here," and yeah. like I said, flexing all over the place. But this time, she was kind of just chill. No, yeah, she didn't. I mean, was she late to work? I don't know. She seemed like she, or she just came on like on the red eye, right? And like just had to come right from work. But you know, she seemed she seemed off her game. She seemed like she was very flustered when she got there. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but yeah, I don't agree that of the portrayal of Emily. She, I think they're making I think her it's seem darn right rude. Yeah, agreed. Um, I think I have a drop for that. Um, how rude! Wow, that was rude. Yeah, it was rude. Um, so yeah, okay. So moving on from Elsie and Whitney, we are back to Spencer and Heidi talking about moving in which has been the issue for the past three weeks yeah Um, and it's been an issue in their reality for only a month yes correct so we're (laughs) pretty much tracking real time here and it's getting as annoying to me as it is looking like for both of them but spencer sort of sets an ultimatum here he was trying to play it cool but then he was like no okay and also i have a theory but give your take is he pushing too hard here um I think he is pushing too hard. Like when you ask once, he said he's only been talking about it for a month. Right. And we've gone over this whole lease situation, blah, blah, blah. Like maybe he's just, it seems like maybe he's just crashing at Brody's place for free and he could just probably leave whenever. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure about Heidi, but I think he is going a little too hard in the situation. Like maybe back off and let it ride out for a little bit give Heidi that space to be with LC and maybe ev- hopefully eventually Heidi figures out that, you know, maybe LC is growing apart as well. Whereas he's pushing very hard to like keep separated from LC, keep Heidi away from him, her and yeah. get him to move in together. Yeah. What's weird for me is he is, he seems to be of the mindset of now or never. And it's mm-hmm. not like Heidi saying, well, I need like a year or two. She's like, "Can you give it a couple months?" Like, yeah. a couple months is not that long. And if she's hanging out at your place and you're hang- uh, like half the time anyway, that's like not that bad. It's not like they're in, they're actually dating long distance unless she's in West Hollywood and he's in like Silver Lake or something where it's like a trek. Um, shouts to my Silver Lake hipsters. Thank you for listening. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do think he is pushing too hard, and my theory is. I know we've praised Spencer a lot. Yep. And this is the this beginning. This wasn't the best. This wasn't the best look. Yeah, I think this is the beginning of villain Spencer. And I my theory is that his, the the villainous villainous wrath and tra- trajectory of Spencer is directly related to the growth of his flesh-colored beard. Because oh. this week was the debut of the flesh-colored beard. <laughs> I didn't notice because it's flesh color. Oh, yeah. it, 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 it took a while. Good thing, you know. My, <laughs> my MacBook has that retina display, and I was like, oh, it's coming, it's coming in. in. Yeah. <laughs> you got the peach fuzz going. and Because the way after the when Heidi said no, and he's like, just get out of my car. Oh, yeah. And get he the like, hell out of my car. Or she, sped yeah, away. Was, oh, yeah. I think it was like, like, get out of my car. And she's like, I hate this car. <laughs> yeah. I hate this stupid car or something like that. Yeah, but yeah, no. Well, yeah, he, she she was like, "Well, my answer is no," and he was like, "Well, my answer is get out of my car." <laughs> it's like, wow, real mature, dude. <laughs> and then he sped off. He could. And I love the sound effects of him like driving up a yeah. hill, and it's like, Vzz! yeah. And at first, when she like walked in front of the car, I thought he was like gonna you know, just jerk it. <laughs> yeah, or honk, honk the horn. Yeah, I Classic. mean, in that situation, you know, Heidi just just take. Go behind the car. Just don't risk it. <laughs> you you know, never know. <laughs> yeah, you'll never know. <laughs> um, but oh, what was the other thing I was going to bring up? Oh, I'll, I'll save it for trust? About what? 
about their trust. Yeah, that was weird. So they were arguing in the car. Yep. And Heidi just takes brings up a in. good point. Really? Go go ahead. I th- I think that's a good point that she brings up of she doesn't want to have a situation like until he I mean the situation of him and the playmate which she brought up mm-hmm. only was like one or two months ago so maybe mm-hmm. she's like trying to tell him like all right like once you finally get over this and it's hard for her to forget forgive and forget apparently yep. of this situation so it's like a best for to give him time like maybe let it go for three or four months and like show that you fully focus on this like a month isn't that long right um so i'm with you through that well, okay. my issue is her leap in logic when she says you're doing this so that you have an out so you can like just mingle with yeah. all the single people and then he calls her out on it he's like what so i i am trying to get you to move in with me and spend more time with me because i want to cheat on you it's like <laughs> it's a little bit it's a little much i know she's flustered and there's a lot going on and there's a ton of pressure on both well, the ends. only thing i the only thing i could think of is that if she is fully committed to him that it's like it's closer to him and then he could she might put her guard down and he can still do what he was right. doing prior right um, so, uh, my other question is, um, so Elsie has been brought up a lot in their mm-hmm. arguments. Yep. Spencer has really been using her as like the case study of why Heidi has to leave and the reason why she doesn't want to move in with him. So she's basically the scapegoat in this situation. Does he have a point or is he just sort of deflecting a different issue? <sighs> See, in that context, I think it's wrong that he's using LC mm-hmm. as like a reason why for her to move out, and then like, he she he thinks that she's separate. Like, yeah, you know, I think feel like in his mind that him and Heidi are perfect soulmates, which right. clearly they probably are. Mm-hmm. That they're like meant to be together, like a hundred percent. Spencer and Heidi, Spidey all day, mm-hmm. and LC drives a wedge in that. However that that seems like coming from a interesting place where it's like you can't you it's tough to force somebody to break up with a friendship right. that they've probably known longer in this situation yeah it's i think oh, it's, and uh, and i don't think lc like it's it's not a he's it's it's using lc as a defense mechanism right that She's, i don't think is necessary i think both of them are both of them, by that I mean Spencer and Elsie, have been really unfair to Heidi because they're just using each other to get Heidi back mm-hmm. instead of just saying, look, I have an issue with the other person. I mean, hang out with them all you want, but I'm just not going to hang out when both of you are there. It could be as simple as that. We brought this up last week. Like for Elsie, you know, if they do end up moving in together, hang out once a week, hang out once yeah. a month. Like, coffee and lunch won't kill you Um, i just wonder what we don't see that's like going on in the behind the scenes right yeah that is keeping expenser constantly angry kayfabe only kayfabe so right now i know as long as irrational but so my my whole thing with spencer is to he's just so stubborn that Mm -hmm. he gets an idea in his head and it's his way or the highway he gets this tunnel vision and he'll just pretty much just grab anything at anything he can to be able to convince her. And he thinks that the sooner he can drive that wedge between Elsie and Heidi, the sooner he can just have Heidi to himself. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. Not not, not a fan of his on this one. Um, I mean, we'll see. The the flesh colored beard is a good point. Yes. So we'll track the flesh colored beard. Uh, I know people have been missing our theories and laws, and I'm gonna. It's not a law yet, but I'm gonna say the theory of the flesh colored beard is now official. Wow. (laughs) Made made it there. I mean, we only have one law and one law only at the moment, Uh, and I don't think that could ever be surpassed. But we might we might have a new one. Um, so anything else you want to bring up on this episode? Uh, 
No, I I, I think that was better. We flushed it out pretty well. Right. Uh, I have one thing, and it's okay. more of a production thing. Uh, I'm just realizing, especially now that we're doing Siesta Key simultaneously as we're doing this. Yep. The what looks to be now, if you show the hills and the establishing shots to, you know, like a teenager, like, and I'm talking like 13, 14 year old, they're going to think that a lot of these overhead shots of like the Hollywood Hills and all that are like drone shots. And these are like legit crane shots or helicopter shots. Like it took a <laughs> lot of work to do that. Yeah. And now you got like some freaking 19 year old with a remote control making just flying beautiful around. seascapes of CSC key. <laughs> just, just, I'm just comparing point. it. I, I just, it blows my mind how quickly everything has happened, especially now that you're seeing technology on the Hills where we're at right now, sort of catching up to modern days. Cause um, Spencer have an is iPhone? up to no Spencer is up to the white MacBook. Oh, okay, the plastic one. So we're at that yeah. point. Yeah, technology. The phones are still a little behind. I think I still had a clamshell phone or like an LG. Yeah, I, I definitely had a, a Crazer. Yeah, yeah, I probably had like an LG Envy or something around the time. So the phones are a little, yeah. maybe a couple years behind. But I don't think I got my not so smart smartphone until. The touch screen? Like software. Yeah, the that fake touch screen. Yeah, where, like the most advanced thing it could do is play Tetris. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, and it wasn't really, it was like a touch screen, but it wasn't like intuitive where I could like oh, yeah. slide things around. I could just press <laughs> yeah. on a touch screen. <laughs> it was basically, yeah, it was probably just like a, a keyboard it, under the glass. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was like a calculator flat. <laughs> There's no buttons. Yeah. But yeah, and we're also starting to see a, a lot more flat screen TVs in the living room. So I'm like, oh, okay, okay. So we're back, officially back to the modern Probably plasma. Age now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm just remembering even as early as when we were talking about Laguna and we were like, what the hell are the things in their houses? It looked like museums. Did I say museums? <sighs> Oh, I always get that wrong. I have no idea. Museums. Muse museums? Museums. Museums. There's no A in museums. Let us know at Coming Clean Pod. Museums? Museums. Modem. Museums. <laughs> museums. All right. <laughs> Let's move on from this um, to the segment that's unwritten by first crowning our MVP of the week. Clap your hands with me. It's the MVP, MVP. of the week. Who gets your praise this week? I'm going to praise Intern Emily. Ooh. Yeah. One out of just spite, and then two <laughs> out of spite. Could you two elaborate? two? She was able to walk on GMA. Oh. Didn't fall down. <laughs> She's going to be also interning with for the same position. <laughs> and I don't know. I just wasn't feeling LC or Heidi. I mean, I, I, I feel bad for Whitney, but mm -hmm. I mean, she fell down. Right. That's a tough jabroni move. That's a jabroni move. Right. Yeah. Jabroni's so trip. it's tough. Yeah. You know, you know who, who stood strong? Emily. Mm -hmm. She even had a handrail. So she actually. Oh, true. Smart. I, I give some points to Whitney because she didn't have a handrail. Right. So that's kind of tough, but. I mean, hey, she was wearing those Manolo better. flats. You were in flats, dude. Was she? That, I, I, that's what they were pairing. At least this the scene that where they were oh, trying okay. on the dresses, um, because Andre said the he, the shoes, the stilettos that uh, they were wearing, too high. yeah, were did not match the dress. And she said, "Well, what about the oh, okay. Manolo flats?" And they were like, "Because she was like, it comes in every color," and that's how he noticed her. Um, I'm gonna give it to Lisa. <laughs> Wow, thanks. Uh, for the reasons I mentioned earlier, uh, she, it seems like she has fostered a good working environment for the people around there. And, you know. Uh, for the teens. Yeah. And I, I know I'm talking about giving my MVPs to people giving the drama, but I would argue that she did bring drama in, you know, just not handing Whitney a job. So, you know, we're, we're waiting with bated breath. And now we got to hold our breath because we're about to enter the Jabron Zone. 
yourself think you're a, a good person but you're a I bad mean, I person. didn't do anything wrong who was the baddest person of the episode mm, this is tough this is tough um man who's bad who was bad I'm gonna give it to I'm gonna give it to intern Emily as well what? whoa <laughs> this is very weird confusing me right Jabroni. now. Jabroni! <laughs> um, <laughs> I just think she was also playing... She The way they portrayed her as a right. villain, I didn't like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, and she played it well. She always had an... Uh, like, she always has this face on. Right. And I didn't really like that. <laughs> All right. Like, she was better than Whitney and Elsie, and, and mm-hmm. I didn't appreciate that. All right. Um, right. I'll, I'll buy that. I'll buy that argument. Um... And you know what? To that point, I was going to give it to Spencer, but to that point, I'm going to go off screen, break the fourth wall here. Fourth. And and no, <laughs> what? No. Oh. I'm going to say, I'm going to flush down the editing team. <laughs> My show, I'll do what I want. Jabroni! <laughs> um, for the way they did portray Emily, which I think was unfair, and didn't really add too much drama because there was absolutely no payoff like if there was a payoff where she was actually like you know maybe they caught her on a hot mic like whispering behind or like if they like caught her like setting up a grease trap on the third step like that would have been amazing (laughs) high drama like put some grease on like paint it yeah (laughs) (laughs) just fall (laughs) Uh, but no none of that so I'm blaming them. And now, any final thoughts on the episode before we move on? No, nothing. All right, here we go. Trivia time. I think you need to step in front of Justin and put the Duke's on, dude. I think you should come out here, right here, and come talk to me like that. It's trivia time. Five questions. What, what, what are we talking about here? Uh, we're talking about March 26, 2007. You are currently... Currently leading 24 to 23. Allegedly. You got a lot of hard questions coming at you. Are you ready? Um, no, but let's do it. All right. Question number one. The U.S. military concluded that high-ranking Army officers had made critical errors in reporting the friendly fire death of Army Ranger blank in Afghanistan, but that there was, but that there was no criminal wrongdoings in the shooting of this former NFL star by fellow soldiers. Who is this person who is highly celebrated across the NFL? Uh, I I knew it was him. I have no idea what his name is. I know he played for the Arizona Cardinals. You yep. can see his face. Yep. I have no idea. Chris something. I'm just no, gonna take it's Pat one. Tillman. Pat Tillman. R.I.P. Next question. It's crazy that we. Never mind. Uh, question number two. <laughs> this song was on the top Billboard charts on this date. It, w- it was the number one. It was one of Fergie's hits featuring Ludacris. The song was Bewitching. B to the E to the W to the I to the T to the C to the H to the Ing. <laughs> what was the <this> song? <laughs> um, it was it... No, Fergie, you said? Yeah, Fer- it's her a song. Fergie like song. Like Black Eyed Peas, Fergie? No, Post. Yeah, yeah, but like that same, Fer- Josh Dumel's yes. wife. Yes, ex-wife. Ex-wife, ooh, spicy. You didn't know, it. <laughs> you didn't know that? That's recent, <laughs> no. man. Oh, uh, nope. Uh, <laughs> 2017. Uh, I, I don't, well, London Bridge? Ooh, good guess. It's <laughs> Glamour. Glam- oh, I thought that? that glamorous. I thought that was a Glenn song. I was gonna say glamorous. G to the L yeah. to the oh, A. Okay. O U S glamorous, glamorous. Yeah. Oh, I thought it. Was- Dang. Okay. Whatever. All right. <laughs> o for two. Question number three. Are you ready? Yes. 
This very famous Instagram star turned three year old three years old on this date. Wow. At this age, no one was going to cash her outside. How about that? Who is this person? I don't know these people's names. <laughs> Does cash her outside girl count? I'm pretty sure that's her legal name now. <laughs> it's not, man. <laughs> It's Danielle Brigoli. Totally. <laughs> I would never have guessed that in a million years. She's so famous, man. She's got a rap career. I know, Bad but I Barbie. know her as Casher Outside Girl. <laughs> oh, well, you got to get on that. She is currently 14 years old oh and gosh. dropped out of seventh grade. <laughs> <laughs> they said millennials are problematic. Crazy, man. <laughs> All what right, que- yeah, oh for three. Question number four. I hopefully you get this one. If you're good with, are you good with uh, states and countries? Uh, um, maybe. Depends. All right. Is it right. like about the states I lived in? Because I know those. But let's nope, do it. it's about independence. Oh dear. <laughs> Not sure how much you know about countries, but on, <laughs> I actually wrote that. <laughs> but, on, but on this day, on this day, Independence Day and National Day are celebrated in this country. This country declared independence from Pakistan in 1971. What is this country? 1971 from Pakistan? Yeah, you're usually not pretty India. good about these. Obviously not India. What's near Pakistan? Is it India? Pakistan? Is it Bangladesh? It is Bangladesh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know Cash Me Outside Girl, but I know my <laughs> Yeah, you're good. You're usually good with these like countries. Yeah. All right, nerd one for alert. F- yeah, one for four. Nice. All right, on to question number five. Right. On this day, we mourn the loss of this famous rapper who died on March 26, 1995. He is known for founding Ruthless Records and being part of N.W.A. He can he can be seen on the mountain in Bone Thugs and Harmony song Crossroads. It ain't easy making it in this business. Who is this rapper? Ah, uh, again, I see his face. <sighs> Wait, am I, I overthinking you... this? Um, no, probably not. It's because it's definitely not Biggie or Tupac. And no. NWA, so West Coast, so that's L.A. Or no, Bay. That's Bay, right? NWA is Bay. Because that's Ice Cube? Yeah, Ice Cube is in NWA, but he's not dead. Yes, I know. Yes, and he's, like, hilarious now. Um, <laughs> something dog, I don't know. Dang. Easy. Easy. There you go. All right. I thought you were a Bone Thugs and Harmony fan. I guess not. Nope. <laughs> I mean, I don't, yeah, I know Crossroads, and I don't know any of the words except Crossroads, because they rap too fast. <laughs> Hey, at least I know Bangladesh. <laughs> there you go. All right, one point. Sorry, showing for me. So you did come. See, you, you at least you came through with like reasonable Rel- questions, yeah, yeah. but like just ugh. not not your wheelhouse. Yeah, you knew my weak spots. <laughs> Fergie songs <laughs> and, and Instagram and famous Instagram people. Stars. <laughs> Only fifteen and under. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, everyone will know if they follow, if they look at who I follow on Instagram. It's just dogs and, pu- pup, dogs and pigs, a.k.a. my ex-girlfriends. Ew. <laughs> JK, <laughs> with all due respect. All right, any recommendations to give the good people? Um, oh, in honor of this show possibly becoming back, to as a tv show i'm going to recommend the muddy ducks trilogy oh the greatest trilogy to ever be you know put on cinematic screens Mm -hmm. go check it out i I feel like this is the second time you've or you might have recommended like d2 or something (laughs) but hey always a good one just keep it back cosine (laughs) um and for uh, my recommendation for any hoop fans out there, I'm going to recommend um, the. I think it's an internet show. I've only seen it on the internet, but it's called Buckets. It's an ESPN thing. Um, just good takes on the NBA in a fun way. Um, this week or today, they had BJ Armstrong 
who claims that he can beat Michael Jordan one on one now because he said <laughs> Michael Jordan's getting he was like literally the only reason why I still work out is I'm hoping I can beat Mo- Michael Jordan one on one and he, he hey, like, that's a I good think, dream yeah he was like I think today's the day he was like I just want to like die to be able to tell everyone that I was able to beat Michael Jordan one on one but yeah it's good stuff uh, for any NBA fans worth a listen all right, let's ride off into the sunset here. We are over time, but we got to let the good people know how to keep in touch with us. Hey, you guys. As always, you can find us at Coming Clean Pod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Send us anything. Check out our website at comingcleanpod.xyz. Support us on Patreon at patreon.com backslash comingcleanpod. You can send us an email at coming.clean.pod at gmail.com subscribe to the podcast on apple products stitcher google podcast po- apple podcasts <laughs> did i write products nope stitcher <laughs> google play spotify or wherever you get your podcasts not products grab some merch at t- t- www.teespring.com backslash stores backslash coming clean pod don't forget to like comment subscribe and tell all our friends about this podcast thanks to radical something <laughs> that's your line <laughs> Thank you to the Radical Something, as always, for our theme song, Kelly. Get down. Always remember, what do the good people have to do? Always rep the rad. Worldwide peace.